attention, uh, attention, this is not a test. There has been an attack from the government facility classified. Reports about the attack remain unconfirmed and fragmented. A biological material known as classified has breached the Nevada facility. Monstrous beings known as classified are killing and maiming all over the world. We are now receiving reports from California, North Dakota, Missouri, Michigan, Indiana, and Washington, D.C. As of right now, there have been no official reports other than we are on high alert. Stay indoors. Stay safe. Stay vigilant. We will keep you updated on these tragic events as they unfold. If a loved one is acting strangely, please protect yourself. If you see anyone with white marks or bleeding blood, anyone, any, please protect your, stay safe. Life used to be good. If we had to, we could we could run to the store and buy our wares. We could go and, and visit friends or go to a restaurant. But we can't now. We can't feel the sun on our skin. It's over. And anyways, humans aren't able to live life ever since the monsters came. The announcer on the radio told us <coughs> told us to stay indoors. Well, my loving wife received the message too late. Now I'm alone and cold. She'd come back. She grumbled at me and I shook my finger, squeezed the trigger. <laughs> After mom died, you were all I had. My own father who would never leave me! So I would appreciate it if you would just suck it up like you always told me to do! I blamed my dad for bringing the disease home with him. It had to be my wife. It had to be Lisa. I was with the military. <laughs> well, we didn't do squat for the good old US of A. This is what we have to show for our service. Death. It, it was suffering and anguish. We, we fight now just to stay alive. Some good men who taught me what war was really like died. The Sarge, his name was Adam Walters. He was loud. You might have noticed that all sergeants were loud, but old Sarge Smith was loud. Warning, sleeper breach. Warning, sleeper breach. All military personnel, government officials, and civilians, please exit through your designated areas. Warning. My code wasn't breach. deleted. Warning. They can use mine. Authorization, All military please. Personnel, Adam David, fighting 47th, 95. Exit through your designated areas. So that's all done now, and we have no use for soldiers. We, we did our duty to keep us all free. We're free now! <laughs> We're we're free to murder. We can we can run naked in the streets. <laughs> we can steal without paying one cent and keep it too. I never had a childhood either because of the apocalypse. Things were better. All I can do is wait out this stupid sickness. I am infected like my wife was, but I don't have the strength to end it. You've got to promise you will kill me before that time ever comes. I won't do it, Dad! I won't snuff out my father's life like nothing! I watched her go and I will not watch you die! I will shoot myself first! I can't watch you die and know I was the reason! If I turn, I will be after you and I, I, I don't want to become one of those things. I'm sorry! the strength that you have you're not going to leave or, or maybe just get outside the walls far far away no. get away from me no 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 You'll hear me mumble or or groan don't look back you will not turn back not for one little second darling 
I, I want you to remember me as I am. <laughs> Not the monsters. <laughs> the ones out there, the, the ones oh, no. won't stop. <laughs> Stay alive. You will be the last human on God's earth. <sighs> Uh, and afterwards, no one will ever know what happened to me. Or you can still kill your old man and, and let me rest as I am. I, I wouldn't blame you. I will not kill my mother! I punched holes in the walls. I hurt my mother's wrist and even punched my dad a You'll few be times. strong. Oh, so strong. I love you. I know that you will survive oh, that no. mess out there. Human ambitions were its downfall. The scientists, the government, and I were a part of it. They said we would make men stronger, but, but the tonic was, was different. There was no cure. Test subjects. There, there was a 12-year-old boy. His host still survives inside. A 14-year-old girl. I gave you the correct answer twice. You just didn't want to hear the truth. A strong soldier. Weirdo Beardo All Double Burrito 5-9. And, and a scientist. I'm not afraid of you. You are just a small, feeble parasite. I was a terror. The subjects turned into monsters. I had been drugged. I, I was powerless, but I would never forget. We talk about the monsters. No, we cause all this. The sleepers, they called us. They called us that because of the way we walked. We were like, like, like murdering cannibalistic sleepwalkers. A soldier saved me. He had let me out of the pen. He led me away. He rushed back into the government building. I, I will never forget. What had happened? The explosion was so intense, blazing debris everywhere. The building was ablaze with people running out. He had sacrificed himself. Sad. It, it was for nothing. It was all gone in seconds. I, I ran as fast as possible. I am gone. Take me, please. I won't do I it. I know now. Do you hear me? I can't deny it. Please, I'm infected. It's all over. Do it. Do it. I am ready. Do it now. I will not do Take it. me, please. Kill me. I'm done. What are you waiting for? No, no, no. no. Please, for the love of God, please. Kill me, Julie. Do it. inside closure please smack that subscribe button and enjoy it's hypnotic mesmerizing dying into the light i feel my eyelids getting heavy and i fall into a euphoric sleep scary but somehow beautiful i die then i change i become one with the monsters inside me Please tell me I didn't do it. Oh no, no, no. Why? Please. Father, please. Father. Suck it up. Please. It's soldier on. No, I can't do this. Fine, fine. I had to leave that house sometime. <laughs> I had to kill my father. And the wall was just ahead. Shoot. Too many of them. I need a diversion, but... 
Ow. Get outside the walls. Far, far away. That broken bottle ought to do the trick. <sighs> Sleepers are so stupid. <sighs> the iron gate is just over there. I could fire my gun, but I would attract the others. <laughs> Get off me! Look off of my leg! <laughs> Enough of this Night of the Living Dead bunch of BS! You want some? Come get some! <laughs> Killed my father! You did this! What's that? Burrito, burrito, burrito. Who's there? Burrito, burrito, burrito. Huh? Radio? Hello out there! Your DJ, the Beard Wild Man Chadwick here. I'm what? coming to you live. And if you are still a I'm not lady, alone. Come on and visit my little hutch. Let me tell you a little story about what I did yesterday. Um, I went down to the road, and it was still there, so I went back into my house. No, stop, stop, please. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. I'm trying to do a program here. How rude are you? How rude. Please, Ryan, let me go. <laughs> I can't let you go, Paul. <laughs> He can let you go. What? Who? Me! <laughs> Me, Paul! Uh, Me! <laughs> he needs to feed. <laughs> I mean, I need to. I need to eat too, you know. No. We... We both do. No! We both do. No, you don't need to, you don't... We... We both do. Who's we? Who's we? Me and you. No, not me. What? You're gonna feed me, me? I mean, I need to eat too. We we don't need to eat him. We both do. No, give me my body back. <laughs> give me it back. Give it back to me. Too late. Please, don't do this. I'm no military grunt. I'm a burrito, burrito. <laughs> eating madman. Burrito eating madman. Does that mean a burrito eats a madman? Or am I burrito eating a madman? <laughs> I'm the beard. The, the beard. The beard. No, no, no. I'm the beard. Wild man Chadwick. <laughs> wild man. I'm the wild man. <laughs> So if you're anything like me, and I bet you are not anything like me, because I'm one, I'm the only, I am the beard wild man Chadwick, and you are not. And I'm living here, and you are not, because I think I'm the only one here. But am I? If I'm not, join me on the beach for hot dogs, caviar, hot dogs, and caviar. And it's time to close the evening out, and I'll say one last little piece of information for you, my dear listeners. The sun is shining, and the sleepers are moaning. It is the perfect day to stay indoors and lose yourself. You bet your sweet Aunt Pippi you are on the right station. And I've come to so, grips with the reality of what I've done. So, air and have some burritos and chill. Boy, the bodies are piling up in here. At the very least, I won't get hungry. <laughs> At the very least, I won't get hungry. It's like going through oh, the motions. So, welcome back to the daily program of filth and entertainment. The likes you have never seen. <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> or heard on the airwaves. Wait, <clears throat> the only thing you will ever hear on the airwaves. My feelings gone. This is me. A killing machine of destruction. <laughs> it's DJ, the beard, wild man Chadwick. With more rhetoric, rhetoric, <laughs> rhetorical nonsense to drive you to your sanity. It's, it's annoying listening to this loudmouth crackpot turning you off, wild man. 
I'm starting to feel changes. I feel their disgusting mitts all over me. What? A plane? Hey! I'm, I'm down here! They picked me up, but I could have never readied myself for her. For Cat. That's what I'm talking about, for the underdog. Why are we picking up that ugly broad? Do you see any other survivors down there, Corporal? We need something to study. Shh, just slow us down before we reach the base. Hello? You have something to say? I'm here. Sweetheart, nobody cares. I don't. Are you sure about this? Fought some sleepers, guess who won? Go to your doghouse. <laughs> You wanna go? Cause I'll go. Right here, right now. CQC, I'm ready. Get fight! Get fight! Shut get up! Fight, Shut get up! Fight, you think get this is funny? Get fight! Get fight! Staff Sergeant, sir! With all due respect, permission to kill her. Stand down, Corporal! I think it's a great big load that you killed anything. The blood on you is most likely a sign that you fell in love with a sleeper and decided to have your way with it. I did kill infected! I had to kill my father! <laughs> okay, okay. So, who's your father then? Ralph Embers was my father's name. True military man. Ralphie was a chumped up marine, wasn't he? Embers was a good man. We turned him into one of those things. He was turned into a monster. I knew him, Corporal. We knew him. He knew what we were doing was wrong, and he suffered from our test, as did many. Now to hear this sad news that he's gone, it's just a shame. And a total waste. Someone is a few fries short. Seriously, learn how to shut up. That's my girl. You show them who's boss. You are the monsters. <laughs> Wipe the floors with their faces, Julie. It's time you left the hard way. Nobody tests Corporal Catlin Church and wins. Jag, Paul, Gretel, you stay here. Don't you dare leave my hut. It's humble, I know. You will all be food if you do. Food. Mm. Yum, 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 yum. Dinner. I'm on the hunt. Time to get out the old can opener. Come on, Gretel. Let's test this bazooka out on that old bird up there. Looks like a Boeing B-52 Stratus Fortress. <laughs> Where'd they dig up that old fossil? A museum? Or a junkyard? <laughs> Sexy. <laughs> Why much, Marine? What's with the turbulence? We've been hit! Everybody hold on! Death Sergeant's dead! Let's just say a little spiritual intervention wow. helped you out with a soft landing, Julie. Oh, God. I can't move. Hey! Hey! Help! Help me! It wasn't long before the sleepers started to notice me. I had to move and leave Catelyn. They would smell her and leave me be. What are you doing? This is the end for you, Catelyn Church. 
I would salute you, but my arm is tired. I'm disappointed in you, Julie Embers. I never taught you this. You never leave a man behind. What's wrong with you? Come back here! You turn around! You look at me when they kill me! You have fun, Corporal. No! Bye bye. People of no use to me in this apocalypse need to get behind me. Far behind me. For now, I had my own problems. That sign. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. Uh, I'm in King Sleeper territory. Sorry I had to hit you over the head, Jules. <laughs> You're gonna have to come with me. Me. I'll just drag you along, Jules. Life was nice. If I had to, I could run to the store and buy you clothes. You could go and visit friends. Or I would go out. But we can't now. We can't feel the sun on our skin. It's over. Anyway, humans aren't able to live life ever since the monsters came. The announcer on the radio told us. <laughs> told us to stay indoors. After father left for the base, you were all I had. My own mother, who would never leave me. Well, when your loving father received the call to return to base, it was all I could do not to worry about him. Now we're alone. I'm cold. If only he would come back. He would kiss me for one last time before I had to go. <laughs> it had to be my husband. It had to be Ralph. He was with the military. <laughs> well, they didn't do squat for the good old USA. This is what they had to show for their service. Violence. They killed your wonderful father. Please, Joshua. Don't blame your dad. Some good men who were in the war with Ralph died. So many. So many changed for America. So many gone. to promise that you'll kill me before I turn. You take that gun. Take me out. Because if I turn, I'll be after you. I don't want to become one of those things. Kill me. No, no. I won't kill my mother. I will not do this. Sorry, I... I haven't got the strength. I haven't got the strength since since father left, and and you're not going to leave. No. Maybe. And no. just get outside the walls. I, I won't Far. kill my mother. Far. I won't kill my mother. Away from me. You'll hear me mumble or groan. Don't look back. You'll not turn back, not for one little second, darling. I want you to remember me as I am. <laughs> not as these monsters. The ones out there. The ones who won't stop. My son. My darling, darling Joshua. You're the last of our people. Please stay alive. 
alive. You'll be the last human on God's earth. Then afterwards, no one will ever know what happened to me. Just please let me rest as I am. I won't blame you. You'll be strong. Oh, so strong. I know you'll survive all that mess out there. I know now. I can't deny it. Please. If it affected with it, it's all over me. Do it. Do it. I'm ready. Do it now. Take me. Please. Kill me. I'm done. What are you waiting for? Please. For the love of God, please kill me. I can't hold on much longer, love. Joshua, do it. Please step back. Mother, please. Joshua, honey, everything will be all right. Now go. I had to leave the house sometime. I killed Mother. You killed Lisa? Why? She was my wife! Wait, this isn't how it happened. What was that? Who was that? Dad? Get outside the walls! The wall is just ahead. You, you're you not my daughter. What's that? Who's there? Show yourself. Hmm. Radio. That's weird. Come on, girly. The King Sleeper territory is no place for a pretty young king like you. What's he talking about? No place for a pretty young thing like you. I'll take you home with me. I really miss her. I need to have her back. <clears throat> Dr. Gretel Nittinger. What's her name? She was very beautiful. Her accent was <clears throat> intoxicating. If only I could have her back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not really alone. <laughs> I have friends. <laughs> now I have you, Jewel Ambers. Jewels. <laughs> Jewels! <laughs> Looks like he's clutching his head and yelling. Must be infected. Let's move out! Hey, coming back, honey. Huh? Why? Where's your head at? But you... You 
begged me to kill you. I'm sure your dadums would be real proud of you. Get out of my head now! I hate that. What's going on? Maybe if I follow down the road, I'll... I'll find someone who can help. I can't be the only human. Maybe that... that strange man speaking on the pocket radio is around here somewhere. What? Who... who said that? Get out. Get out. Get out. Stop it! Go away, Joshua. You don't exist! Yeah, get out of my head! I knew I had to go back sometime. Back to reality. Now, I'm here. The reality check bounced even further than I'd expected. Waking up sitting next to an operation gurney with plated whatever it was sitting next to me wasn't what I would have called dinner but it was better than nothing at all I had to eat no matter what I was so hungry picked up the raw meat and proceeded to chew Wait, who else is there? It's all right. Come out. That's close enough, Julie. Just come out or I'll bring you out and you won't like it. It was dark. It smelled bad. This place smelled like death. A smell I'm used to. Yes, you are about to become a sleeper's next meal. Tea? Uh, I haven't got time for calming tea. What's all this? You're that annoying man from the radio. The beard, wild man Chadwick, with his smooth, radiant tones. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> right. Uh, someone's a few fries short. Are, are you... nuts? I am nuts! And so are you, Julie. You know me. Well, that's a thing. <laughs> what a basket case. Hey, that sounds like someone I know. Maybe you two should get to know each other. Go away. Leave my daughter be you good-for-nothing parasite. Jules doesn't need you breathing down her neck, you disgusting creature. You talk in your sleep, but that's neither here nor up there. You see, <clears throat> your father was deeply interested in the military's grip over the world. The single-mindedness and the crazies up in Washington who thought it was smart to play God. A plan was put into action to make stronger and better soldiers. So Dad was right then. Eventually, Washington launched a special project ent entitled... <clears throat> Petty Officer Third Class Ralph Embers, you are being called back into active duty. Your commander will be Sergeant Major Adam Walter Smith, who will be joined by Staff Sergeant Ryan Wildman Tadwick and Corporal Caitlin Turk. Grab your uniform and get to the base as soon as possible. You will be performing your regular duties. You have knowledge of Project Nap? Sir. Yes, sir. At ease, Petty Officer. Good. Then you know what the project is all about and what the sleepers are. Yes, sir, I do. Super and sleeper soldiers for the military. Permission to speak freely, gentlemen. At your own discretion? Yes. Permission granted. Know that this will be off the record, of course. I hate this project. Innocent children have been experimented on since the 1940s, and I'm sick of it. I was one of them. Now, ten... Huh? Sir! Yes, sir! See? I have control. Dog, come with me. I have something you need to see. We ruined everything! Are you kidding me? 
I knew sleepers were created, but I didn't know the half of it. What, what of the government facilities and our soldiers? Why weren't they prepared for this sort of situation? We lost everything. I lost everything. Of course, the facilities were readying up uh, and building soldiers of biological weapons, testing children and military units alike, pursuing results without regard for its, its simple cost. That's great. They used all of us. They used my father, too. He worked hard for his family in this world. He loved me and my mom. How, then, how did this little sham of theirs turn out, aside sleepers roaming free? After that, what could they do to make things better? They're worse. I am infected, too. I'm changing. But there must be a way out, a cure, or something salvageable. Tell me what happened next. We need to make this right. We have to try. The project, however, ended violently. The efforts of your father's fight against Washington after he was tested were not in vain. <laughs> I saved him. You what? Then that must mean that you're the soldier from- The soldier from his story. Get home to your family, Ralph. That's an order. I'll help Ralph get to safety. But what about Gretel? Don't worry about Gretel. I'll try to keep the rest safe. I know it wasn't much help to my platoon, but maybe I could do something for these people. I need to get back in there. I just can't leave Gretel and Sarge Smith. Wait, Chad, come back! Those dead bodies? Wild man, what are you doing with those dead bot? Why are you staring at me that way? Don't get any ideas, maggot breath. The victim! The victim? I was a virus! The sleepers came from that virus. You and I alone have the cure. How best could we cure all of you? <gasps> get your claws off of me! We won't cure the world that way! I'll be populate with you? Ugh. Get away from me or I swear I will kill you! Chadwick, back! As I scuffled with the beard, I saw everything around me. Piles of bodies next to a dirty mattress on the floor, a mishmash of wire strewn from a rotting desk, connected to makeshift radio equipment. I had to think. The fork. I still have the fork Chadwick gave me to eat that disgusting, sickening mess. He's a big guy, and I need to do this at the right time or he'll overpower me. If I could just trip him up over those... those dead bodies. I don't know what time it is anymore. Morning, new day, night... But I'm just a wild man. I'm a bearded man. I have no weaknesses. Yet there's something that keeps crying inside of me. It feels like I'm churning slowly, finally... I find I am hungry, and I start to hunt. I start to walk out of the darkness and into the light to hunt again. Come on, baby. I saved your father. We're the only two on her. You're right. You did save my father. I'm so grateful, Chadwick. Your beard is just... Mm. You know what I need? You wild man. One little moment with you, baby. Oh, this is too sad. You're really desperate this time, Julie. Shut up. Keep watching. If I know my daughter, she has a plan. No doubt about it. Maybe. Still, it's funny to watch her stoop that low. <laughs> so entertaining. She had this coming. If you're gonna survive this world, you gotta get dirty. I am the King Sleeper, the best of the best. See the spots? You're like me. You're already covered in their filth, babe. We don't die. We must be God Sleepers! <laughs> Mate, can we make the Uber Sleeper, sweetheart? Hope you like a girl on top, you disgusting freak. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
<clears throat> now, kids, GJ, wild man, <coughs> the wild, <coughs> wild man, the beard Chadwick, is off there. It was good while it lasted, Jules, wasn't it? Please give me the uh, mic. Thank you. I'm coming, my sweetheart. I left the hatch. Dork. Oh, hey, babe. Thought I got rid of you. <laughs> you can't get rid of me. I'm the reigning champ. And, well, you're the reigning chump. You leave my daughter alone, Corporal. What's the matter, Daddy? You can't let her fight her own battles. Thanks, Dad. I miss you so much. I walked for miles. I killed some sleepers. And I haven't seen anyone yet. I hope I don't run into another wild man. Hot. It's too hot. I need shelter soon. These trees seem thick enough for a quick rest. I'll just take this hand radio out. Maybe I'll find some music somewhere. Somehow. I'm living on the air in Cincinnati. Here, everybody, in your ear. I heard a new friend on the radio. His voice was so familiar. I know him. I needed to get back to the old colony. You know, I got all the flies out of here. No, it's just useless. We, of course, were losing the war. Hmm. I needed supplies, and to bury my dad. That's why. That's why I'm heading back. My name is, well, let's just call me your guitar man for now. A nice, calming, dream voice to help you through your journey. It will be hard to go back. You know, I walked a few miles in the cool air today. The scenery was nice, and the trees everywhere. I came across the wooden sign. The sign read King Sleeper Territory. I'm now living in the King Sleeper Territory. Hmm. Scary. Come on, you know him. He sounds like a scumbag. Oh, <laughs> maybe you do know him then. I swear, I really don't know. He was good. Even though he was in and out of trouble, he loved us, Jules. He loved us a lot. You will know who he is. And in time, you'll figure it out. We'll have to move on. You, um, see... I don't know about you, Baldy, but I'm not going anywhere. You can't stop me. I'm here to support her. That's my job. Your job is to be a parasitic piece just, of... Just stuff it, okay? God, you're cranky. There's the old house we lived in before the colony. It's all burnt to the ground now. Nothing left but memories. 
Daddy, what kind of car did you used to have? 1968 Camaro. It was a dark, beautiful baby blue with bucket seats, Julie. How did you meet Daddy? Oh, <laughs> a friend of mine named Joan had a boyfriend who had a friend. She told me I might be interested in him. We met at Mark's drive-in, and I was telling my ex-boyfriend, in the nicest way, to get a life. <laughs> you used adult words, didn't you, Mommy? It's okay, I have heard them at school. Don't worry about it. Oh, I'm not bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you have, have you? <sighs> well, me and your father just sat for a while. He told me he was just finishing his term in the military, and <laughs> that he was a drummer in a band. He, of course, was just full of a bunch of hot air. This place has too many memories. We got about two more hours of daylight left, and then I'm gonna hit the old hay, which is right next to my equipment. Uh, hold on. Some of that real quick. Yeah. That's good, yeah. Alright, that's good. I moved a few things around. Looks pretty nice. You know, it's not as good as my old Winnebago. I remember someone I used to know had a Winnebago. But who? But who? But who? Welcome to my humble Winnebago. <laughs> Leave your troubles on the door, man. Get on it. Whoa, that's a big hug you got there, huh? Oh, how's my little jewels doing today, huh? I made it to the wall. I turned off the radio so I wouldn't attract any unwanted attention. memory I would rather forget altogether. I don't need that aggravation. That's PTSD for you. Always popping up when you don't expect it. Now that you have returned to the colony, little memories will pop up. Good and bad. Guns. They're not toys. I... I never wanted you to have a gun, Julie. But you'll need it. It's just... Well, it's a big responsibility, Julie Embers. That's silly, Dad. I already know about guns. Yes, Jules. Still, if you are to use a gun, we need to take precautions, too. My daddy. I love him. But I'm sure he thinks I'm stupid. He is way too protective over me. And I just don't have patience for anything. Are you even listening to me? Because this is serious, Julie Embers. I'm here, Daddy. Why aren't we doing this again? I lost Lisa. I'm changing, too. I will need you to take me out on my say-so. You will. No, I won't, Daddy. I won't kill you no matter what. Our old rundown colony home. I had to irrigate a small clan of sleepers. Consider this an eviction notice, screwheads. <laughs> Come 
Coming back again hurts. I can't stop hearing Dad. Screaming at me to kill him. Kill me. Do it now. His voice stabbing my heart. Sometimes. Sometimes I blame myself. No. No, it never would have happened if you didn't bring the infection home with you, Dad. No! You're, you're right, Julie. Don't blame yourself now. It, it was all me. I knew I shouldn't have come, but I did. I, I didn't want to die alone. I'm sorry. It was so selfish and stupid. Aw, what a cute little family reunion. Enough before you make me sick. Put out, Catelyn, before I leave you under an airplane again. I am quivering with fear. But I had good memories, too. As I walked past the plastic drum of rationed food that the colony shared, I stopped in front of the old iron stove and remembered. Daddy, could you teach me how to cook? Okay, but no magic chef stuff. No adding the kitchen sink, the table, or things like that. Jules, you must be patient. All right, I will, Dad. No matter what you make, add just a little Italian seasoning. And what else do I do? Figure eight. Figure eight? Stir it. Always stir in the figure eight. Like this. Not all bad memories. Looking around, I saw our makeshift dining table with Dad's tools and bottles of dusty flat pop. Unopened cardboard boxes sat next to the old metal bookshelf. Man, what a dumpster fire. No wonder he wanted to die. Shut up. I just need to get my dad's body and... He's... He's gone! Life didn't used to be this bad, you know. It was worse, actually. As they carried me from the burning wreckage, I could feel hunger. I needed to feed on something, but I didn't know what exactly. Sleepers can speak. They're talking to me through my brain. It's so weird. They carried me past a rickety looking wall. Some sort of colony? That, that waterfall. Is that blood? I sank into the pit of substance I could only describe as blood. I felt myself turning faster. Then my memories came flooding back to me of when I lived in Harlem, New York. What a life. I was born Catelyn Spear to a single mother, and my father, well, he left. Idiot. I was tough. I was fearless and I didn't care about anything but staying alive. I had to. Hey, baby. You going my way at all with that fine craftsmanship? I had ways to survive. The garage was good and clean enough to keep me happy. It had a roof and food, sometimes. I never wanted to go home. <laughs> yeah, real funny. Uh, hey, man, you got the stuff? Come on, I ain't got all day! You need something, I need something. Screw me, and it's the last mistake you ever make, homie. Sure, I got the goods. You up into the jungle pretty late, sweet stuff. I has another job. <laughs> Forget about it!
about it. I ain't no skank. Now quit jerking me around and give me my fix. You need it? Then work for me, and you can tweak all you want. On me. No charge. I promise. My word, as a respectable businessman. Sorry, I don't turn no tricks. Okay, cowgirl. You ain't my pimp, got it? No one is. Screw this, I can get my fix somewhere else. You're missing out. I hated going back home. Catelyn! Catelyn! You're late. Oh, God. Ma, you're drunk. Again. Come on. Uh, let me help you up, or you'll never get to bed. Get off <gasps> me! Fine, wino. Sleep on the floor, then. Hey, you got dirty, dirty, filthy hands, so you won't touch me. Good. Ain't nobody around here wants to touch you anyways. What did you just say to me, you stupid, ungrateful little piece no! of... Ma, please, don't hurt me! <laughs> hurt ya. I ain't gonna hurt ya, Catelyn. I'm gonna kill ya! No, please! See now, why I never wanted to go home? It was because of her. Mom. She was a waitress at some dump called Gravy Davies. Audi sexy lady. Hey, hey sweetie, what can I get you tonight? She didn't care. She never cared about anything. I was about a good time. Maybe I can drive you to my place? Sure. My shift ends at 10. And that's when it happened. Alone me. Oh, thank you. It's funny how life is sometimes. It was a drunk driver that killed them. I didn't even know about it until... until the next day. And you know what? I didn't care. But the Cinderella story isn't over yet. I was homeless. I fought for my meals and fell into a bad crowd. I worked the streets, gambling, whatever. Where's my money? No, 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 please! I'll have it by tomorrow, I swear! It's overdue, cat. <laughs> hey! What? This here is none of your business. I have just made it my business. The nightmare was over. He adopted me. We lived on a farm together. My hero's name was Colonel Church. I learned the value of life. And even more importantly, I learned how to live. When I grew up, I joined the Marines and worked up the ranks to a corporal mechanical engineer. I wanted to be a better person, to make my new father proud. He passed while I served. But I will never forget Colonel Johnny Church and his kindness, or my trials on the streets of Harlem. Oh, please, you hurt me, hurt me. But that was quite some time ago. And I'm still here, drowning, red as far as my eyes could see. Another memory flooded in. A memory of a woman. A, a doctor. Dr. Gretel. Well, where to begin? It was 1969. I had moved out of my mother's home and enrolled at Humboldt University in Berlin. That was where I studied biochemistry and psychology. I earned my degrees in biochemistry and psychology in 1975. For a while, I worked for Wilch Research Labs in another part of Germany. The sleepers were pulling me from my watery grave. The stale air dried me to a point. I felt the stickiness covering my body. Sweet. It was surprisingly sweet. I knew it was blood. 
sleeper's blood. It had a strange human taste to it, too. And as I looked around, my vision was strange, like thermal vision, almost like something I'd have on my military headgear. I didn't need a helmet or goggles, it was just me. I saw men and women strewn up on wooden wall, and I saw my hands, my, my claws. The conversion was complete. I, I'm dying. Sometimes within my skull's dusty bookshelf, I hear rattling off his very old memories. Memories of when I killed them. The voices that get louder and louder and then I... I hear my dad talk to me. And then I hear her. You sick of me yet, Julie? That's too bad. We're just getting warmed up. <laughs> Chadwick, remember. Don't acknowledge him. That's why I've shut off the lights. That's why I made this a calming room. Where you can be away from noise and just relax. Lock him out, Chadwick. I'm here for you. Remember that? He's in this room. Remember that? He's here. No, he is not. Remember what we said about closing your eyes and shutting him out? Don't acknowledge him. If you do, it will be like he exists. I do exist. I exist! I exist! He can't shut me out! He doesn't exist. Calm down, Chadwick. All right. Thank you, Doctor. <laughs> You're stupid! I can't even talk to her. You'll lose your job. She'll tell you, sweet and bip. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. These sessions, they really mean a lot to me. Good. We are making progress. 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 Sleepers, a few of their lackeys. Clear out the waste, burn the bodies, spray some scent and bug spray in the air and all the people. I need to turn this down before I'm found. There must be about 50 of the little suckers. I'm sure if you poke a few of them with a stick, they'd get the point. That's not funny. What? No comeback for me? We Quit heckling everyone so we can move out. Remember, in this plane of existence, I still outrank you. Put up or shut up. That's okay. I still outrank you in IQ points. Uh, don't you guys ever stop. I'd rather hear sleepers mating than the two of you bickering in my brain. Well, you might just get your wish, Jules. I was ready to pounce. 
Oddly enough, a stick was near, and it was sharp enough to quietly run the sleeper through. I jumped up and... sure what I just heard or who was even talking to me it seemed as if the voice was in my head my changes are advancing I can feel it perhaps the voice is part of the change dad Catelyn do they even exist they're leaving I'm safe for now anyway you could be lunch in a few moments lunch in all this confusion I almost forgot the supplies from the old colony Ration bars. Mm, yummy. Slow down, Heifer. It'll still be there if you come up for air. Shush. She's over here. Get off me or you'll regret it. <laughs> Clean up, I'll wasteland. You made me drop my ration bar. Remind me why I'm stuck with Baldy again? You know why. Humor me. She isn't ready to hear it. Hear what? Cough it up. Tell me now. Really? You don't shut up all day and now you're giving me the silent treatment? I want to leave my post now. You're waiting orders, so sit down. Go up, you bald head. Go up, you bald head. Not yet. I feel for you now. Feel what I feel. Can you force me to do the unthinkable? Take a look at me, killing you. And they could see the images I projected. It stung them. The animals. I will slay them like the animals they are. I have one thought. Revenge. They caused circumstances that forced me to kill my father. Told me. He said my name. I miss my niece. Who was this man? My older brother. They moved on. I needed to hear him. 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 Welcome to my humble Winnebago. <laughs> Leave your troubles on the door, man. Get on it. Whoa, that's a big hug you got there, hon. Oh, how's my little Jules doing today, huh? This isn't just another social call. I'm infected. What? No, no way. This isn't happening. It's all true, Bill Hartsock. I know. I was there. It was the general. He did this to me. I am not losing my brother to the war machine stupidity. I'll die. And then I'll change. And I'll become... One of the monsters. That's bull. I'm not letting it happen. There's nothing you can do about it, Bill. Oh, man. God, you can't leave us. We're moving up north to the new colony. Our house was burned during the Third War with the terrorist group. God, jeez. You guys better get out. Fast. There are loads of those sleepers outside. Teresa, you need to get to the back. And what are you gonna do? Well, distraction, Junior. Distraction. Listen, Bill, these aren't just a bunch of politicians you can go out and write with your hippie friends. These are sleepers. It's too risky. Hey, it's what I do best. Now get going. Run! and needed some tuning. <laughs> tuning helps me forget. <laughs> Music helps me forget. <laughs> helps me forget how I lost my family. <laughs> to the sleepers. 
I know. We don't have to turn back, Jules. He understands. Trust me. Why would you want to go back? All you'd see is a bunch of dead bodies. Catelyn, that's enough out of you. Oh, apologies, sir. Don't apologize to me. Say it to Julie. Now, Corporal. Whatever. Fine. I... I'm sorry, Julie. I really am. You didn't deserve the crap I've been giving you. I'm done. I promise. Wow. Are you actually being sincere? Why? You got a problem with it? If it's not good enough for you, I can always take it back. Corporal! Sir, yes, sir! Cat, unless you found a cure for ugly anytime soon, apology not accepted. Maybe you should leave the banter to me, moron. You kind of suck at it. Okay, enough of the jokes. I've heard enough out of you, Catelyn. Oh, please. Are you serious right now? I should be doing way worse things than occasionally making fun of you, maggot. What? What are you even talking about? You killed me. You left me under a plane for the sleepers. You left me to burn as I do now in death. You're worthless. You hear me? You couldn't take a few insults. So you abandoned me and left me for dead. I know. Listen, I went through flames too. I killed my father. I'm infected with the virus now. I was almost molested by some filthy caveman and now I'm hearing voices. I don't need you to tell me about having a bad day. I know I was wrong. Even my father was disappointed in what I'd done. But it was a snap decision and I had to think for myself. I chose to survive. I don't need someone tearing me down and reminding me of my mistakes every waking moment. I blame myself for your death. Don't you dare rub it in my face. You both messed up. You have baggage and it's understandable. But at this point, it's all moot. You've all said what you needed to say. Now let me speak, Julie. You made mistakes, but that doesn't exempt the fact that you are my daughter. I love you no matter what you did or ever will do. Understand? That being said, whatever happens, Jules, honey, don't try to fight it. Dad? What do you mean? It's not my place to say, Julie. Just know I will miss you. What? Dad? Jules, it's almost time. And now, my dear beautiful listener, don't cry when you say goodbye. No. Oh, please, not again. I can't do this. You know, kid, you're all right. I've seen you fight. You've got spirit. Too bad we have to part ways now. You have to admit, Julie, I kind of admire you. So long, scumbag. Daddy, no, please. Let go of me, sweetie. Rip the bandage off clean. It's all right. I love you. I'm proud of you. You will do great things in this world. A few years ago, I would have uh, said figures. But now, now I have been given a chance to see you bloom. No, Daddy. Daddy. Don't go. Please. <laughs> You're telling me don't do this. Daddy. No, Daddy. Oh, Father. No, Daddy. Being a 
Chadwick, remember, just ignore him. Eventually, he will go away. Want to sit with me while I eat my burrito? Sure thing, Doc. The mess seems pretty sparse today, but I think I'll have some SOS. I'm feeling kind of bland right now. My other personality saps the energy from me. Burrito. <laughs> oh, just shut up already. <sighs> remember... Do not acknowledge him. I know it sounds like a broken record, but you can't. Burrito. I'm more of a hot dog and caviar kind of man. Burrito. But a burrito will do nicely. Mm, yum, yum, yum. Good. <laughs> okay, we got our grub, Doc. Where are we sit? Well, that place looks nice. Yeah, I think it'll do nicely. Are you okay? What's, what's got you so miffed about that woman over there? Dr. Lara Jo Schneider. She tried to steal my work. Back when I was at Humboldt University in Berlin, it was 1969. I was 17. That woman was, sadly, my teacher. She presented my work as her own to the board of directors. They believed it was hers. She tried a cheap makeshift version of my cocktail. Look at her leg. <laughs> it messed it all up. Her body didn't take to the serum. And there you go. It turned into a mutant gene. The gene moved to her leg where they had to amputate. She looks pretty tasty to me. I'm a chubby chaser. And that fake leg is a real turn on. <laughs> so, you're the one who developed the gene. Yeah, Chadwick. Er, Chadwick. I developed the gene splicing here, though. I did it by combining animal DNA and human DNA with... <clears throat> Don't tell anyone this, but I used some genes they found at the UFO crash site. The crash site. Site 115. Wait. What? You mean the Nevada incident? That's a big mistake, Doc. Don't you understand? That's the only way our race will see its full potential. You really shouldn't trust General Stephen Sloan Hellfinger either. He is known for uh, his unscrupulous behavior. Also, Dr. Schneider is his close assistant. He trusts everything she says. Doesn't surprise me. So, Doc, do you have a contingency plan if this thing goes sideways? My body will not contract the disease. I am immune. If I have any sexual contact with anybody, then they will carry the cure as well. Hey, wait. Where are you going? Oh, there she goes. I sense some trouble. General Hellfinger, might I have a moment with you? Alone? Do not trust anything she has to say. No, it's okay, Dr. Snyder. Leave us. It's okay, we're out of your sight. What's on your mind, Dr. Nidenzer? Dr. Lara Jo Schneider is a fraud. <laughs> She's a genius. Please, don't trust this woman. She stole my research into a serum that would have been a cure-all. She is a manipulator. Hmm, let's see. She uses whatever opportunity she can to get to the top, including me. <laughs> C is a brilliant mind, Doctor. And you dare say these things? I could kick you out of this facility if I wanted to, Doctor. Keep that in mind. You two deserve each other, then. So what was that calamity all about? Where are you going now? I'm going this way. To put away my tray and... Well... 
Why don't you follow me and find out? What kind of stupid idea was that? Having relations with that... that... thing! <laughs> Why? She's lying to you! Yeah, she carrying all kinds of diseases, all sorts of things and all that shared between your bodies. <laughs> <laughs> I ought to live here too, you know! I think it's time for you to just can it! What? What did you say to me? I'm the only one that loves you! I'm a true hero. I will always be your bro. You know that. We're bros. You and I, brothers. Don't you forget it. You don't belong with her. You belong with me. Me! Me. I love her. You can't have me. And you can't have her. I will live my life the way I want. Do you hear me? I can't help but hear you. <laughs> but I'm not the one who is not following the rules. What do you mean? <laughs> you acknowledge me, bro. <laughs> How do you feel? The silent treatment, then. All right. Straight to business. I like that. Makes this easy. Dr. Ground Major, I will break free, Doctor. So you have psychic abilities. That's how you knew my name. Okay, good. Check. So, how are you feeling, Subject 12? No. No. I'm beyond all that. I hear everything. I feel everything. Something of this host still survives inside. He says something. God complex? Homicidal? Sociopathic? With selfish and fantastical thoughts. Very delusional. He says you're doomed. <laughs> so, the sleepers have a hive mind then. Good. Check. We are getting somewhere. Keep talking. What do the other subjects have to say, Twelve? Those other voices, your kin. What do they have to say? You have nowhere to go, so just talk. They say it's almost time. That soon we shall see. Our incredibly full potential. Humans will be but a small, insignificant glimmer. You think we're stupid? You are not escaping that glass enclosure. And neither is Subject 14 or any of your sleeper friends. We will kill everyone that you love, Dr. Ground Danger. Your family, your friends, all of your colleagues, they will all perish, and even you will go down in flames. Chadwick will lose control. You will not touch Chadwick. You understand? I will kill you if you lay one claw on him. I will personally haunt every sleeper down and destroy them all. We won't have to do anything to your precious Chadwick. His mind is gone. He hears voices in his head as we do. Yes, we can hear all his thoughts. I'm not afraid of you. You are just a small, feeble parasite. Now, how about your strength? Can you crush? Maybe lift a car or run at super fast speeds? Yes, we truly are almost done. We are becoming more powerful by the second and this bulletproof glass won't hold us forever. How strong are the sleepers? You are about to find out. <laughs> How strong are the sleepers? I answered you. Okay then, how did you answer my question? 
How strong are the sleepers? Strong. Strong, okay. Is that all? I gave you the correct answer twice. You just didn't want to hear the truth. Dr. Gretel Menninger. What is it, MP? We need to get you out of here. A few of the sleeper groups have broken from their cells. I need to get you to the safe room as soon as possible. By order of General Helfinger. All military personnel, government officials. Get out, Gretel. Run away. Now, or you could witness our strength. <laughs> Because of you. Blood bath helps ease the process. Hanging dead bodies, ripped up tents. This was once a colony, you monsters. Everything inhuman, just horrible. I know what is wrong, Mistress Julie. No, not <laughs> now. <laughs> Stephen Sloan Helfinger state, having been appointed to five-star general in the United States Marine Corps, do solemnly swear that I will support and defend the... I never cared for a ceremony or tradition. I'd been in the military, poked and prodded since I was ten. I never had a childhood. The Dreamland facility was my family, my father, my mother, my adopted father, Everett Helfinger died from a heart attack in 1949. That was when they sewed up. Men dressed in black from some other branch claiming they would adopt me. They claimed that I would go places. I did go places. Fast. The reason I'm such a military genius? That would be the alien DNA coursing through my veins. Yes, you heard me right. It was those corpses from Site 115, they used to make me the catalyst. Subject Zero. 
It started getting fun right around the 1950s and 60s. Not only did they fill me with unknown plasma from another world, but I experienced full strength and incredible intelligence. I developed a taste for cigarette selects, and man, I only got stronger. I rode horses, commanded officers, and had everything catered to me by mother. Code for Area 51. My code, anyway. I came to love this place. I could use that Gretel. And just think about how much more powerful I could be if I got my hands on her serum. I would truly be the catalyst then. Congress approved me to go through further testing since 1989. They may have made me, but I'll break them. <laughs> Their last mistake. But you have been chosen, my dear. You are very special to us. You're... Nothing special. <laughs> Nothing... special to me. I hate you. <laughs> Get you out of here. One day he may rule the world. Oh, what's the code? <laughs> I will rule the world. There we go. Come on. It's this way. into the safe room, Sarge. I have ordered to keep you and Ralph out of the safe room. Look, you have seen the general. He and his lackey are insane. Both of them are the most manipulative creatures on this planet. My kind of crowd. Uh, shut up already, Beard! Uh, 
please! I know it sounded strange what you just heard there. I I'm having a bad day, okay? I I I'm just having a high stress level or something, Sarge. But please, please, think about it, Sarge. The facility is ablaze with alarms. Why are we the ones locked out? It's not my place to question the chain of command, Staff Sergeant. Then it will be more blood on your hands. I know how you became Sergeant. I get that. But I still respect you. Yes, I got my hands dirty once. I won't again. You're a good man, Sarge Smith. No matter what anyone says, you're nuts. He's no saint. He got his entire platoon killed. He was the only survivor. You want him on your side? Fool! I'm the saint! Golden Fitron 33 were a bunch of idiots who couldn't wait to die. They were heroes. Whatever! Adam David, fighting 47th 95. The reason why I am feeling changes is not because I am schizophrenic. The reason why I've become insane is pretty much because of a mental breakdown. Man, you're boring. <laughs> Let's get one thing straight. I get it. Schizophrenia is not like split personalities. The entertainment industry almost always gets it wrong. I know this already. You're wrong. And if you think I'm clairvoyant or that I'm possessed, ooh, no. It's hallucinations. I truly suffer. And you could never understand. Oh, I understand. Yes, I understand. You're nuts. Ding, ding, ding. I win the grand prize. <laughs> I wasn't always this bad, though. Huh. I, I got worse over time. Mm -hmm. I only started to hear voices when I was roughly about 17. Who cares? Before the voices, I, I mainly saw things. Bad things. I thought they were masterpieces. Beautiful. Simply beautiful. I had a mild case of schizo that developed into a severe case. Schizo. Oh, you're gonna sit over in the corner of house, bro. You have schizo! I had a mild case of schizo and it developed into a severe case. That doesn't happen. I hardly ever hear the voices when I'm with you. With me? Oh, I love your stinking face too. Sucker! No, not you! Oh, her. You found someone as ugly as you. People often sound muffled because I am trying to zone out both voices and actual humans. I do that because it's just too much of a sensory overload. You're just rude. I'm not rude! Rude. All voices in my head are negative. Most specifically, the wild man. My wild man. You better nut it up, buttercup. Wild man, uh, well, he came to me when I was 18. He zones out the voices a bit. A heck of a lot better than I ever could. You're fat. You look good. I hope you fall into a ditch someday. Go on, go on, go on. Jump in front of a cheek, front of a cheek, front of a cheek. Sarge, let me back in. Let me in. Don't go back in that death trap. Stay with me. Staff Sergeant Chadwick, what are you doing back here? I came to get Dr. Gretel. You need to get out of here too. I don't leave a man behind. I'm fine, Staff Sergeant. We need to get out of here now. We have to get out of this facility together. We also need to bring the base down. I can't let these beasts roam free! What beasts are you talking about? The sleepers or those two? I know all about your weird history, Chadwick. You're a psycho boy. You will never amount to anything. No one will ever love you. No one will ever want you. That's right. I know your filthy little secret. Schizoid. If anything, you deserve Section 8. She's funny. <laughs> Did you tell her? I, I swear, I didn't. I care about you too much to do that. You dare challenge me, Sergeant Major Smith? You dare challenge me? I've been through enough, sir, and I know an honorable man when I see one, and you are not. I know an honorable van when I drive one. I've been through some hard times recently, and... Get over it. I could care less if you were hit by a Mack truck. You can talk the talk. Can you walk the walk? You look like a decent challenge. You look like a good wrestler. So come on, close quarters now. Stop, please. Stop. I don't want to lose you, Chad. Okay, only because you want me to, Doc. We can't blow this place. The chemicals on this base, 
If some of this makes into the air and the fires will spread, what of the sleepers? What if even a few of those things survive the explosion? We have to take that chance! We must do something! Fine, I'm leaving. I'll put in a command to set this facility ablaze. Get out as soon as you can. Adam David, fighting 47th 95. T minus 10 minutes. I'm General Steven Hellfinger, and I say when we're done here. When we get out of here, maybe I can get back with help in two shakes of a man's most prized burrito. Authorization, please. Gvetel, Niti, Delta, Alpha, Sigma, Five. Authorization unknown. Request denied. Ugh, let's try my code. Authorization, please. Weirdo, beardo, double burrito, five, nine. Authorization unknown. Request denied. What about the cure? Are you maggots locked out? <laughs> yep, your codes have been removed. Give the code! That's Sergeant Chadwick. Only one code remains. And? And you'll have to pry it from my cold, dead body. They can use mine. Authorization, please. Adam David, fighting 47th, 95. I'm the catalyst. I will bring in a new nation, a stronger nation of sleeper soldiers, the likes the world has never seen before. <laughs> yes, I'm changing. I'm getting bigger. Sleeper. Chadwick, remember that. Live for me. Don't, don't close your eyes. You are the cure. Stay awake. Please. I love you. Please don't leave me. I love you, Chadwick. Oh. Hey, hey, Doc. Doctor, you can't be dead. Who's... Who's going to continue my therapy? <laughs> my old man. Get out of my head. You don't need a companion. You have one. This is the wrong time. No. 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 Burrito. 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 No. 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 It's my body now. <laughs> the beer, beer, wild, wild engine. Thank you for listening to The Monsters Inside. Starring the vocal talents of Ty Anderson, Olivia Steele, Toby Mobius, Mandy Nittinger, Kate Bell, Lynette Dolan, JXN, Nathan Bechtold, Noelle Elan. David Phillips, Taylor and Dana Ashcraft, Dennis Collins Jr., and Ashley Woods. Edited by JXN, Noelle Ashcraft, Ashley Woods, Mandy Nittinger, Dangerous Schmidt. With music by Dangerous Schmidt, Wiener Haven, for the underdog, Mandy Nittinger, and Dennis Collins Jr. This project is dedicated in memory to Ralph Embers Ashcraft. Active officership may be over, but service is not. I want to be a good soldier. Play carry on. With the destruction of Area 51, I crawled on my hands and knees. 
out of the twisted, burning wreckage and saved a good friend.